Welcome back to the next video. So what we're going to do is we're going to look at some physics today. So what I'm going to do is I've kept the sprite test from last lesson. Um, and I'm going to add a collider. So sprite test dot collider. Now I can either have static, I can have um, kinematic or dynamic. Now by default, they're always dynamic, but it's always good to set. You can put dynamic or you can put D. Okay. Now nothing's going to happen when I run this except for the text is going to disappear from last lesson because I leaked the code. Um, nothing's going to happen. However, if I add some physics, like gravity, for example, so if I do weld, so this is a, an attribute in the P5Player Player library that's, um, I'm going to presume, so I don't actually know who, uh, how it was made, but it uses the Planck library and applies some physics when I do gravity. And then you can have X or Y. Obviously, we want the gravity to come down. So, here we go, y equals, and I'm going to say 10. Now, if I then run that, this square should drop infinitely off the screen because there's nothing to stop it. So, what we're going to do is make a floor. So, I'm going to say let ground. Ground equals a new sprite. I'm going to make that at the height, which is going to be 400. Take away 10. Um. And I want to make it on the, for the bottom of my X position. I'm going to make it a zero because I just want it to be here and down here. And then I want it to be width and then a 10. And like I did before, I'm going to make it static. You can do it separately. You can do it in one line. doesn't matter. Uh, and what should happen when it runs, be a bit slow. Like last, like the last video, always seems to crash when I'm recording, so that's always really, really good. Um, he's gonna change his mind for me. Oh, I swear, it said something about a second ago. We'll give it a minute. Um, but what should happen anyway is it's going to tumble to the ground, and what it's going to do is fall. Um, and it'll hit the ground. And it'll stop. Now, one thing I have noticed—I don't know if that's a P5 play error or what—but when you put in the width, it always seems to do half the size. So what I've always found, if I'm doing the floor on the screen, just do width times two, and it will be the full width of the page. So there we go. So what I might want to do is I'm just going to put it a little bit higher, and what I'm going to do is I'm going to rotate the ground. So ground dot rotation equals 45. So now I've got a 45 degree angled floor, um, like that, you see it's bounced off now. Probably shouldn't have it there. I should probably have it, I don't know, 100 pixels in. Um, and just have a play around with it so we can see it. Maybe maybe it's a bit ridiculous doing it that much. Maybe I could do like a 20 degree angle. That's probably a little bit more, a little bit less silly, a bit more uh, sensible for this example. And what's going to happen is it'll bounce off there and roll down and slide off. Okay, so that's our physics. Now, if I change this collider to be an N, it has no collider, so it'll fall straight through the floor. And if it's static, it stays in the same position. Um, oh, sorry, it's, it's not going to do that, because, sorry, it, that's me getting confused. It ignores all physics. If I put it to a K, sorry, it's best to get it right when I'm talking. Um, it should ignore, because what it does is essentially... Uh, oh, well, it's not white, is it? Um, oh, yeah, it's me being stupid. So, dynamic follows the physics. None just means, uh, so static doesn't do anything. You can't move it at all. Now, kinematic means it can only be moved by you changing the code. Um, and if it's none, it's just completely taken out of the physics, and static always stays in the same place. So, the difference between D and K of dynamic and kinematic is that if I put in some controls, which we're going to do later on, what you'll find will happen, don't want that, um, is I'll be able to run through the floor, but with dynamic, I won't be able to. Okay? Um, so that's that. So that's pretty much it for the physics, except for what we may want to do is change around with things like velocity and things like that. Uh, so we're not going to look at physical properties in detail. We're going to do that in a, in a later video. But what I might do is do... Um, change it back to D, and what I might do is do 
sprite test dot vel velocity dot x equals one. Now what you're going to find is instead of just going straight down and bouncing, it should. See, I've knocked it up a little bit more. I've knocked it up. So if I change that to two, it'll tumble a little bit further. Um, like that. So it's jumping off. So maybe spawning an object. What I might want to do is do something like the y velocity to minus 10. What that'll do is it'll fire itself in the air when it loads. And then should come flying down like that. Okay. Um, so those are sort of your basic bits and bobs. So, um, so yeah. So one thing you might want to do is let's just put this back to normal. Let's have the floor. And then we might have, um, I think that's fine. We'll keep that at zero. So we've got our floor. We've got our sprite. We've got our gravity. Um, and we'll get rid of that velocity because we don't need that anymore. Now what we might want to do, now I'm, what I'm going to do is a for loop, which if you look in my JavaScript programming series, you will have seen what a for loop is. So for let i equals zero, i is less than I don't know, 50. Uh, I think that's probably too many. I plus plus. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to make a bunch of little sprites. So I'm going to say uh, new sprite. I'm going to spawn this on the x position. So it's going to be i times 10. So it'll spawn it all the way on there. Um, the y position, if I nest this for loop for let j equals 0, j is less than 5, j plus plus, so I'm going to make it at j times 10 like that, and then let's just have it um, 20. So what that should do, let's put my brackets back in properly, is it should spawn me essentially a big grid of um, circular sprites. So let's see if that works. I'm sure there'll be some sort of error that I've messed up with. Positive. So what should happen is I should spawn. There's no errors, which I don't think there is. Oh, there is. Uh, let i equals zero, semicolon. Missed that off there, didn't I? So let's just launch that. Okay. So all I need to do now is set them to static so they don't move. I might need to space them out a little bit. Um, so they're all static. They're in a bit of a grid there. So let's just space them out a little bit. Let's make sprite test dot width equals. Let's just start this as well. Uh, so it's a little bit further down. Um, let's just do sprite test dot height equals 10. Hopefully they'll be spaced out a little bit more now. And if I spawn that now, oh, my mouse again. Uh, let's spawn it at x0 and we'll do that at, sorry, y0 and we'll do it at the width, which should be half of the thing. Of the thing. So now what should happen is our physics should work. We should get a little box. Now it's a little bit annoying because I've not spaced them out enough. So you see that it's popped onto that. So if I just do just sort of spaced out a little bit more, I don't know if that's maybe too much spacing now. Um, Yes, I could plan things better in advance, but there we go. Um, if I just reduce that to like 35, they're static. Then what should happen is it should hopefully not just land in the middle of it like it just did. There we go. It falls in there. So you can imagine you could do something like pinball or something where you use the physics to bounce off various pins. Obviously, I could offset them a little bit. Um, if I wanted to, uh, I'll randomly place them around the uh, the thing. I could quite easily 
just do you know random width as well and they'll be all over the shop now um not the best idea that i agree because it's going to get stuck there <laughs> but um so every time i refresh it it's going to it's going to randomly have a new um a new set so it might work well it might not it's random we don't know it's reducing numbers so it's not as bad but but yeah so that's your, your essentially your basic physical properties using gravity velocity and your various colliders so i've tried to keep it nice and short how we're looking 10 minutes i'll do for me um please like and subscribe and i will see you in the next video last time i checked i was on two percent subscribers so make sure we're doing that for me please I'll see you in the next one.